Once I've chosen my animal, I'm going to break him down into simple shapes, so simple geometric shapes. Um, so I think that the body is roughly like a semicircle. You don't have to draw on yours, but this is just to show you. Um, I think that his head looks a bit like a triangle. That his ears look a little bit like a triangle too. And that his neck appears to be a bit like a rectangle. You can see it also curves around, so I'm just going to add that curve in. Um, the legs down the bottom uh, look a bit like a triangle and then a rectangle. And the same on the back too. So it's not perfect, but it can get us started. And then there's a little bit coming down for the hoof. And then if I just add the back leg in too, you can see that's quite straight down, but there is a gap in between. So it's very, very simplified. Um, and this is what helps me to get started. So now I'm going to draw these shapes onto my plain paper. Okay, so I've drawn out all of those shapes that I had before. Uh, onto the paper using a pencil. Um, if you make sure before you start that you've got everything that you need, so you, you'll need a, a rubber as well, and uh, make sure that your pencil has been sharpened um, so that it's easy to use. But I'm using nice light strokes, and you can see it's not a heavy line. It's very lightly done because these ones are just guidelines, so I need to be able to rub them out later. And I want to make sure um, that I'm getting the lines right later on. So they're, they're going to be quite sketchy to begin with. Um, so after you've got all of your shapes down, you're going to start to change the outline to improve it. Um, so if we look back to our deer or back to your animal, you can see at the edge of, of uh, between his body and his neck, it kind of goes up a little bit of a lump. So we're going to go back into the drawing and just where that line is we're going to instead of making it go down we're going to make it go up like that lump does a little bit and then we're really carefully looking so we can see this line actually goes up the page this is straight across at the top this is um, I've got an angle going up towards the tail it's not very steep so I'm going to draw it quite lightly draw a gentle line going up the page and then when we get to the tail area, you can see it flattens off a little bit and then goes down into the tail. So just before we get to where the tail should be, we're going to make it a bit flatter and then curve it down into the rest of the tail. So uh, I'm just using this line along the top to help guide how steep this line should be on his back. And so now I'm going to do the same thing as I come around the rest of the body. So as, I, as I'm drawing, I'm always looking back to my original material, whether it be on your phone or the computer or printed out. Um, and I'm kind of measuring things from the last thing that I've done just to make sure that it's always in proportion with the next bit. OK, so I'm going to keep drawing and hopefully speed it up and uh, you'll be able to see how that outside line starts to improve. And now, as you can see, I have um, improved on the, the outside line. And um, if you noticed, I didn't rub out the line before I I drew onto um, the guidelines that I had already. I used those and I kind of worked off them. So um, I only rubbed out once I was sure that the line that I'd drawn was the right line. And it got a little bit messy down here, didn't it? It, it You kind of, um, all the lines got a little bit jumbled. So you can rub them out, but what I want to be able to know is that I'm not gonna make that same mistake again that I'm going to improve on the, the lines that I already have. Um, and the only way I can do that is if I can see where I've already gone wrong and try and improve it. So keep your lines there, use them as guidelines. And then if you need to um, rub them out if they're getting a bit messy, but um, I would suggest that you rub them out only when you're happy with the, the line that you've drawn.
going to come back to the original picture and I'm going to have a look at some of the features. So I definitely want to put in um, how that there's a darker bit and a lighter bit within the ear and I want to put in his eye and his nose and his mouth. Um, I would probably want to put in this little line down his tail as well. Um, and if there's any other difficult um, details that now's the time to add some of those okay i'm not going to add this pattern across the back and i'm going to show you why in a bit okay so the, there aren't many details in um this deer i would or, or always try and start off with getting the face right because if you can't get the face right it tends to not look very realistic um, this eye maybe is a little bit too big. If you have a look at the original, you might go back into that later and rub it out and have another go. Um, so why don't I want us to add the patterns? This is especially true if you're doing something like a giraffe that is basically all pattern. Um, you, you really want to focus your tonal pencil shading on um, making sure that the animal looks three-dimensional. And then after you've done, made it three-dimensional, then you can go back in and you can add the patterns. And that should help it look like a 3D form rather than 2D, which is what we're drawing in. Um, so I'm going to start to add some shading. I'm going to pinpoint the darkest areas first. It's um, different people do different things. And I always like to start with the darkest areas because I feel like they um, shout out to me a bit more. Um, so... Um, if you have printed your work in uh, grayscale, um, in black and white, that might be a little bit easier for you. So I'm going to definitely start off down the bottom here and over here and at that ear and at that eye and maybe at the hooves as well. And all the time I want to be thinking, actually, this isn't a, a thick line. This is actually a gradient, so it's dark and then it gets lighter and lighter and into basically the lightest part, which is on this part of the animal here, the highlight. So I'm going to try and make a gradient from here that goes all the way to that the lightness of the page there. And I'm going to do the same from the back and the same from that part of the leg just there. Um, it kind of curves over, doesn't it? So darker, lighter, lighter, lighter until it's lightest of the page here. And then I'm going to keep doing that for the rest of the animal. So hopefully we'll get to the point where he is uh, totally shaded and then I can start to add these marks into it. Okay, so now I'm feeling quite happy about the amount of shading that I've added in. You can see, even though there isn't an awful lot of shading from this point into the animal, I've added just a slight um, gradient into there um, because otherwise I'd just be left with the line and I don't want it just to have a line because there shouldn't be a line along the edge of the animal. It's not a cartoon. Um, so now I've got all of my shading done and you can see it's darker underneath because the light is falling from the top and even though this is a darker area it's not quite as dark as underneath um, and you can see I in some areas I've I've left it quite light and added darker into the background so that it makes the, them stand out a little bit more and down at the bottom where you can't really see where the hooves are i've just added some like blades of grass so that you can see that um i'm not just making it up i'm not just going to make up the hoof there i'm going to try to um make it as accurate as possible and therefore i need to have a little bit of grass in the front to make make it look more realistic um if you were going to continue with the shading you definitely put shading um into the background as well because then it will start to make it look like the animal is stood on something but i'm not going to go into that today um so now the whole body looks more three-dimensional i'm going to start to add um the patterns in so all of these lovely dots um and i'm also going to start to add um, some little lines in there as well um, to give the effect of it being furry or hairy um, so I definitely recommend this if your animal is furry or hairy
So I'm vaguely happy with what I've done so far. Um, I think I could probably go into it with a bit more detail, especially along the back of the the back, um, and making sure that that looks a little bit darker, make sure it pops out a little bit more. And I could definitely work into the background and the shading down the bottom. And I think this bit maybe is still a little bit too dark, so it needs a bit more of a gradient. Um, but I'm, overall, I'm quite happy with what I've done. And um, I hope you guys will be too.